Ed Rivers of the, Rock, uh, of the Scott County Health Department, and I will be answering Vaccine 101 questions. Um, first of all, we're going to start with some Rock Island County numbers. Uh, today, we are reporting 124 cases for a total of 9,522. Unfortunately, we are reporting five deaths um, for a total of 192. Uh, we, send, we send our sincere condolences to the families and friends of these Rock Island County residents. In Scott County, the Iowa Department of Public Health reports 12,000 636 cases and 113 deaths. And as Janet mentioned, we will be going through some COVID-19 vaccine questions that we know are on the mind of residents in the Quad Cities. And so we have Ed and Janet here to answer those for us. So and we'll kind of split it between the two and be able to answer any questions that you have at the end. Ed, first question is for you. It seems like the process for approving the vaccine moved pretty quickly. Did it, and what does that mean? Well, historically, it's taken many years to develop a vaccine, confirm its safety and efficacy, and manufacture in sufficient quantities. This timeline was shortened for the COVID-19 vaccines. Many of the steps in the clinical trials were allowed to take place at the same time instead of one after another. Also, due to the pandemic, the United States government and others have heavily invested in building the manufacturing capability to produce large quantities of the vaccine before the findings of the phase three trials were available. This ensures that the vaccine is available once the authorization is given. None of the ways in which the vaccine development and production was sped up mean that shortcuts were taken or safety was compromised. What will the COVID-19 vaccine perfect in, protect individuals from and for how long? Both Pfizer and Moderna's vaccines have shown about a 95% success in protecting people from the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Experts don't know what percentage of people would need to be vaccinated in order to achieve herd immunity to COVID-19. Of course, herd immunity is a term used to describe when enough people have protection either from previous infection or vaccination, so that it is unlikely that a virus or bacteria can spread and cause disease. As a result, everyone in the community is protected, even some people don't have protection themselves. The percentage of people who need the, uh, protection in order to achieve herd immunity varies by disease. We've been hearing lots about vaccine first starting to arrive in the community. When do we expect that to happen here? And do we know about how many doses will be available to the first tier group that will get vaccinated first? The Illinois Department of Public Health has told local health departments to expect first shipments to arrive in Rock Island County sometime next week. Rock Island County Health Department is expecting a thousand doses that will be split evenly between Unity Point Trinity and Genesis Health Systems. From there, the hospital systems will triage doses to their health care team. Subsequent shipments will also go to the hospital systems. After the hospital systems have vaccinated their team members, doses then will go to other medical first responders, including paramedics. The Iowa Department of Public Health also anticipates some vaccine will arrive in local areas next week. Scott County is expecting about 2,000 doses that will primarily be going to, again, Genesis and Unity Point Trinity. We're awaiting final guidance from the state of Iowa, and we may adjust those allocations next week to include emergency medical service providers. How will the community deal with the ultra-cold storage of the Pfizer vaccine? The Pfizer vaccine is required to be shifted up to 90 degrees below zero. However, it's stable outside of that ultra-cold temperature for five days afterwards. The Moderna vaccine does not need the ultra-cold storage. Now, the state of Iowa is only shipping the Pfizer vaccine to facilities and providers that have ultra-cold storage. Certain facilities in Scott County are able to store this vaccine properly. Five-day clock starts ticking when the doses start to be transported to Rock Island County. How many doses of the vaccine will each individual need when it's their turn? 
both the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines, which are expected to arrive in the next two weeks, require two doses. Individuals receive the second dose of the vaccine after at least 21 days for the Pfizer vaccine and after at least 28 days for the Moderna vaccine. Do both doses of the vaccine have to come from the same vaccine? Yes, both doses must be the same vaccine. Va vaccines cannot be interchanged. As individuals are given their first dose of vaccine, of the vaccine manufacturer and other information is recorded in the state's immunization registry for future use, and the second dose will be scheduled. Will individuals be able to choose which of the COVID-19 vaccines that they want to take? When the limited supply of vaccine that first makes its way to our community has provided a priority group, such as healthcare workers, individuals uh, in the priority groups will be provided the vaccine that's available at the time based on the supply and their distribution factors. When enough vaccines available for our community for everyone who would like to receive it, it's likely that individuals would have greater choice in which vaccine they receive and where they receive it. One important thing is vaccine safety. How do we know if the COVID-19 vaccine is safe? Vaccine safety is a priority. New vaccines go under serious reviews in lab and through trials. Early results from the trials show that the COVID-19 vaccine has worked as it's supposed to with no serious side effects. These results include uh, the more than two to three months of follow-up of individuals involved in the vaccine trials. There's solid medical and scientific evidence that tell us that the benefits of approved vaccines far outweigh the risk. This is also true of the COVID-19 vaccine. The FDA advises manufacturers that at least 3,000 participants are required to assess safety. Uh, the current phase three trials have included 30,000 to 50,000 participants. Vaccine approval normally includes four phases. Once the vaccine is approved after phase three, phase four will continue and will include continued monitoring and gathering of safety data. So if I was an individual who had just gotten the vaccine or preparing to, what reaction should I expect after getting the vaccine? The vaccine does not cause someone to get sick with COVID-19. Vaccines teach our immune systems how to recognize and fight the virus that causes COVID-19. Sometimes this can produce symptoms, such as a sore arm, headache, chills, or fever. These symptoms are normal and are signs that the body is building immunity. You can expect those side effects to go away without complication or injury within about a day or two. Remember, these are signs that your immune system is responding to the vaccine and building immunity. Okay, Janet, we're gonna have you answer a couple more questions that we have here on the vaccine. Um, if someone already had the COVID-19, should they still get the vaccine when it's available to them? Jen, I think you're muted. <laughs> Thank you, Brock. Um, right now, we don't know how long natural immunity lasts for those who have recovered from the virus. The CDC, C is still learning more about natural immunity and COVID-19. Uh, the CDC's Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices will make recommendations on who should get the COVID vaccine. But that said, the vaccine can increase your protection from the virus if you've already had it. So if an individual knows that they're healthy, why would they still need to be vaccinated? While you may be healthy, many others in our community have risk factors for getting serious complications from COVID-19. So getting a COVID-19 vaccination protects you, so you may protect others around you as well. If someone may be nervous about getting the vaccine, what should they do? It's normal to be nervous about something new and to have questions. We encourage you to ask those questions, and but get your answers from reliable sources. We recommend looking for information from the CDC, the FDA, both state health departments and our local health departments, both our websites and our Facebook pages, and also on togetherqc.com. As it gets closer to the time when the vaccine may be available to you, your healthcare provider also will be a great resource to talk about the vaccine. 
How will individuals in our community know when it's their turn to get the vaccine? We have a team in place working hard to communicate this important information to our community. You can expect to get information from our departments through avenues such as social media, our website, our local media partners, and also our local healthcare providers. There is no list that any first responder, healthcare worker, or member of the public needs to get on at this point. And the rollout of the COVID vaccination program can be compared to the rollout of a new software on your phone. We expect some challenges and we'll work quickly to meet them. So when it is someone's turn to get the vaccine, where will they expect to get it? So the first priority groups to get the COVID-19 vaccine will be healthcare providers, and they will likely get it through their employers. At later points, uh, there could be some community-based sites. As most, most vaccine makes it into our community, we do expect to use these community-based sites. Once the vaccine is available to all who would like it, individual healthcare providers likely will have a role in giving the vaccine. These plans are changing as we learn more about the vaccine supply and federal and state recommendations. So once an individual does receive both doses of the vaccine, will they still need to wear a mask and social distance as we've currently been doing? Yes, um, mask and social distancing are still our best protection against the virus until everyone has been vaccinated or at least a large proportion of the population. Initially, we will not have enough vaccine to vaccinate everyone who wants it and the virus still will be transmitted. Will individuals need to expect to pay for the vaccine when it's available to them? No, the federal government is committed to providing uh, free or low cost COVID vaccines uh, to everyone. Uh, this was done through taxpayer money. Uh, there possibly could be an administrative cost that will be covered by insurance or other sources for individuals without insurance, but cost will not be a barrier. What can you tell us about the new method of vaccine being used, which is for the COVID-19 vaccine, called mRNA? First of all, they're not going to give you COVID-19. Um, mRNA vaccines do not utilize virus, and, and so it will not give you COVID-19. They also do not interact in any way with your DNA. mRNA stimulates the body cells to produce a protein that looks like the COVID virus with, to our immune system. This kickstarts the product of antibodies, the production of antibodies that fight the actual virus. mRNA never enters the nucleus of the cell, which is where the DNA or genetic material is kept. After that, the cell breaks down and gets rid of the mRNA soon after it does its job. Um, for those residents that live in Illinois, um, how can they be assured that, you know, some of the areas that are considered downstate are getting their fair share of the vaccine supply that's coming to Illinois? First of all, the city of Chicago is getting its own separate shipment from vaccines from the federal government. The rest of Illinois will receive shipments through the Illinois Department of Public Health which determined that 50 counties in the state will get doses first because of their case count. Rock Island County is among those first 50 counties. Another last question that we have is when will children be given the vaccine? So the Moderna vaccine, which is scheduled to be the second one to hit the marketplace, has included children in its clinical trials. We expect more information about results when the Moderna vaccine receives emergency use authorization from the FDA. That could be as early as next week. If a pediatric vaccine is improved, approved, children will be prioritized along with other groups. Some may fit into other groups, including those with chronic disease or who are essential workers, et cetera. So thank you, Ed and Janet. Those are our prepared questions that we had today about the COVID-19 vaccine. We're continuing to put all of this information on our sites, as Janet mentioned, as well as Together QC. And we do invite if the media has any questions right now on the vaccine or on other topics related to COVID-19 for um, Janet and also Ed before we conclude for today. Okay, question here. What is the distribution plan for communities outside of the immediate metro area? Um, do you wanna to speak to some of those smaller areas, Janet, that are still in Rock Island County? Sure. Um, each county helps, let me make sure I'm not muted. I am. 
now you're each county, <laughs> each county health department um, is uh, in charge of getting vaccine to each, to its populace. So Rock Island County is in charge of Rock Island County. Um, so Mercer, Whiteside, Henry, those adjoining counties will people should be looking to their health departments for that information. Storage. Um, this question, and I don't know if either of you can answer this, did Genesis get storage capabilities? Are other systems or public health entities getting storage capabilities? I'm assuming this has to do with the um, sub-zero Pfizer um, vaccine. Janet, do you have any information on that? Well, I can speak for the state of Illinois. It is going to be shipped frozen, and then once we pick it up from an undisclosed location, um, that's when it will be thawed, and that's when we have that five-day window to get it into the arms of uh, people who need it. Brooke, uh, Genesis Health System did purchase three ultra-cold freezers, uh, and there was an existing ultra-cold storage location already in the county. So Scott County has uh, more than enough uh, ultra-cold storage for the task. Ed, I don't know if you can speak to this. Are we currently seeing flu activity in our area? And then Janet, same for Rock Island County. Last time I looked at the flu statistics, they were down this year. And this may have something to do with the fact that we're being so very careful about how uh, the things we should do to keep COVID-19 from being transmitted. And that's the same way the flu is transmitted. Are you, are you seeing the same? Um, I looked yesterday at the statistics and they are in Illinois, they are reported on a regional basis from Sentinel sites and we are in the Peoria region and there was a really low incidence of flu in the, in the community. That said, um, there still is time to get your flu shot. Uh, we can do it here at the health department or any uh, pharmacy or any or your healthcare provider, it's really important this year that we get the flu shot because as we've said numerous times, the flu and COVID-19 use the same healthcare resources. Um, so we already know that our healthcare system is being burdened by COVID. And so we need to prevent uh, the flu so we don't burden the system even more. see one more question here. Um, will Quad Cityans run into any trouble getting vaccinated in their primary care doctors or, or on the opposite side of the river than where they live? Um, do you know if these questions have been answered yet by our state health departments? I'll start with Janet and then go to Ed. You know, those are some of the questions that we just don't know the exact answer yet. We do believe that people are going to be able to get the vaccine um, when, for like, to their employer for those people who have frontline jobs. Um, but that's just one of the questions that we are um, still waiting to get guidance from the state about. That's the same situation in Iowa. The Iowa Department of Public Health has convened a working group uh, to determine a lot of these things, uh, what priority groups are after uh, the healthcare workers and emergency services workers. And I'm certain that these details will be worked out by the time that the vaccine is available to the general community. Ed, do we know are there interaction concerns with flu and COVID-19 vaccines? Um, I saw an article uh, some weeks ago, I don't know if this has been updated or not, that indicated that they anticipated uh, no deleterious reactions between the two. Sure, more to come on that as we get more information out there. Um, we'll go ahead and conclude the briefing for today. Um, in case any of you had some audio issues, this is recorded and posted on the Scott County Health Department's website and is shared on both of our social media pages. So you should find that information there. Um, as we continue to get more information about these vaccines, we will share. Uh, we appreciate your assistance in getting our community members to the information that we have on both of our local health department sites. As well, there as well as togetherqc.com. So we encourage you and thank you for continuing to share that. Thank you again, Ed and Janet, for sharing your time with us, and we look forward to talking with you all next week.